And we are back. It is player review time once again. I'm only going to bring you four reviews today, but they are all very important cards that I know a lot of you are looking at at this moment in time. I would bring you some more team of the season reviews. However, it would also spoil my pack opening video for the upcoming week. So reviews on new team of the seasons to come in next week's video. But today we are going to be focusing on the Lampard and Burkamp objectives, as well as the Araujo SBC and the Jolington objective cards that I know all of you are looking at, looking to get your assessments on how good and how valuable these cards are. And as you look to your screen now, we can do this review straight away. And we're going to start with Araujo. We're going to start with the man that is on my screen right now. And I'm going to tell you this straight up and look at me when I say this. This card is horrendous. What? He is one of the worst centre-back I've used this year. Do not do that. Look at me. Look at me. Do not do this card. He is that bad. You look at the stats, you think he should be okay. But the pace split is too big. He just does not catch up with quick players. If you're talking about high-end gameplay, your Alawirans, Jarzinho's, and Bappe's, all the rat players, the Arby that a lot of people are using at the moment with his upgrade, he can't keep up. The pace split's too great. With the lengthy... On him, with the slow acceleration, even on a shadow, he doesn't even get close. He just gets burnt. He's absolutely nowhere. Tackling seems non-existent. He seems weak, despite having ridiculous physical stats. He's six foot four with 97 jumping. He doesn't win a single header. The passing just isn't there either, but you can tell that. He's only got 70 vision. It, everything that this card should be good for, he is terrible at, and... The only way this card becomes semi-usable is if you put him on an engine to deal with the balance and the agility, but then he doesn't have defending stats akin to the likes of Ramos and Bonucci, Carlos Alberto, a bunch of other players that are currently available to you. And that's the thing for me. The way I defend, I like my players to be aggressive. I like them to be on top of their attackers, hit them where it hurts. I might smash into somebody just to make me feel better. This card just can't do that because of the lack of balance and agility. He just gets turned too easily. I'm used, to, like I say, to using the likes of Ramos that have high agility and balance where I can just come at them with the pace and just hit them really hard. And this, this card just doesn't do it. He is absolutely horrific. And for 500k worth of fodder, it's just an absolute ripoff. I'm telling you now, avoid this card like the plague. He is that bad. I imagine if you're one of those players that sits on like 20 depth and... Disgusting! doesn't rely on aggressive play. He's probably half decent. I'm sure he makes a bunch of AI blocks with his height as well. But even coming up against him in the games I've played this weekend, he's not caused me any problems when I've been attacking. I just think this card isn't it. And I'm telling you now, avoid this card. I've even got a clip to show you. Have a look at this. So this is the clip from Fut Champions earlier on today. Now, I don't normally include clips in my reviews because it's hard to gather all the relevant stuff together. It's hard to really give an actual showing of the reasons why I like or dislike a card. Just It's very long-winded to get the key moments together. But this was just one that I felt I had to include. Now, as you can see, it's a really tight game. 1-0 up, 65th minute of the game. It's a really tight game of foot champs. A game I need to win because I'm trying to do the objectives. Now, granted, Foyth's not covered himself in glory either. But look where Araujo is right now. I'm in control of him. The only real options for this guy is to try and go round Courtois because he's not going to score in this position with Burkamp. Courtois is already too far out. Or he can pass it to Fernando Torres. However, I'm in full control of Araujo right here. He's already activated his lengthy because you can see he's in the full sprint motion and he's got a good solid two yards on Fernando Torres. So in this position here, Araujo should be dealing with it absolutely comfortably. But what happens instead is he just stops and lets the ball roll past him. And that was the final straw for me. He was already struggling before this point. But to be in that position there where, like I say, Foyth's not covered himself in too much glory either. He's let Burkamp run. But from this position here, Araujo should easily cut this ball out. And he just, you see the stutter. You see the little stutter from Araujo as Torres gets past him. That's not good enough for a high-level centre-back. He should have been dealing with that very easily. Whether I'm controlling him or whether the AI is controlling him. And for me, that's just not good enough at this level. And I think that's just all down to those stats. The lack of pace, the lack of balance and agility, just to position his body in the right position to make those interceptions. So, like I say, for me, 
that's unacceptable at elite level fuck champions. And I know that's where the majority of you will want to be using him. So yeah, hopefully that clip can dissuade you. So yeah, just please promise me you are not going to do this card. Look at me again. Look at me again. Are you doing this card? No. Right, good. Away from Araujo, better news about the other players that we're reviewing today. We'll start with the two that have been there for a while, and that is Lampard and Dennis Burkamp. For me, Lampard is okay without being brilliant. He's obviously got a tradable version that's relatively cheap as well. The problem you've got is that he's three-star skill, four-star weak foot, high medium. So you need to play him attacking, but he's not got four-star skill. His balance and agility isn't great. His shooting and his passing, absolutely fantastic. And there is a definite shout for him to be able to do certain aspects of the game. But you can't really play him as a CDM because he's high medium. Good card for me, not worth the time and effort to put in to complete this Frank Lampard. You've still got two weeks left to complete him if you haven't done so already. So I would say the only benefits are the packs you get along the way and obviously the fact that you get an 86 and a 90 rated card as fodder. But I would say with all the stuff going on around Team of the Season at the moment, spend your time in the menus building up packs other ways rather than doing this Lampard. On the other hand... I really like this Dennis Burkamp. Yes, again, there is another version available for around 300k with a five-star skill stat as well. But there's still a week left to complete this Burkamp, and I actually think he's worth it. If you look at the stats here, this is all in relatively high-level gameplay. Four goals and five assists in six games using this card. He is just ideal for how I have my forwards. I usually play one up front, but I use them sort of like a false nine, drop in, get on the ball, turn and play passes. That's exactly how you use this Dennis Burkamp. And I've given him a finisher just to get those balance and agility stats and those shooting stats through the absolute roof. He's never going to outpace anyone. We know that. It's pointless giving him a hunter or an engine, something like that. He's never going to outstrip defenders. But by just using the attributes and using him like it's Dennis Burkamp, at the end of the day, these cards tend to reflect how the players played in real life. And this Dennis Burkamp is fantastic at getting on the ball and creating chances for others and then getting back into the box to score goals for himself. For me, this card is worth the time and effort. Obviously, if you've not started him yet with just a week left to complete him, you're realistically not going to do that. But if you're midway through him and you're thinking about maybe I should finish it, again, you get some good fodder out of it as well. You get the 92 Burkamp as just free fodder for your club as well. For me, Dennis Burkamp, 100% worth the effort. And finally, we have this Joel Linton card. And I have to say, I think this Joel Linton is one of the best CDMs on the game. Oh, really? And I stress that it has to be CDM. If you try him as a box-to-box -box midfielder, once again, you really need to give him an engine. And like with Lampard, with the four-star skill missing, it just doesn't quite work for me as a box-to-box -box midfielder. But if you give this guy a powerhouse, as you can see on my screen here, and you give him the role of CDM, either as a solo CDM, which is how I normally play them, or as a dual CDM in a 3-5-2 or a 4-2-3-1. I genuinely think this is one of the best CDMs in the game right now. He is absolutely phenomenal. You can see the boosts from the powerhouse. Gives him all the stats he really needs to play at CDM. And then you've got the passing as well. Vision to 99, short passing to 99, long passing to 93. On the four-star weak foot, you have him in that sort of anchor position, the quarterback position, getting on the ball. You know, he'll win the ball back for you and then play a pass. He is absolutely top-notch. I thoroughly recommend him. He's very easy to complete. I was able to complete him at the same time as doing Hanko as well, just using a Prem and Eredivisie side. You can see him here in my Premier League team. I am crazy enough to actually try and do this foot champs objective this week where I'm trying to get the three wins with each major league. You're mad. Thank goodness for that because if I wasn't this would probably never work. And I'm proud to say that I was able to get three wins out of three with this Premier League team and Joel Linton in that CDM spot was a prime candidate for being one of the top players if not the top player in this team as I was able to get those three wins. So Really, really recommend Joel Linton. And a fire on a reminder, stay away from this Araujo. He nearly cost me my three games when I used the La Liga team in foot champs this week. Thankfully, I was able to get three out of three with La Liga as well. No thanks to Araujo, as you would have seen in the clip that I showed previously. So that's going to be it for player reviews this week. Obviously, I know that there's a new Delefeu that's just come out. I'll do my review on him next week, as well as a bunch of, hopefully, the new team of the seasons as well. 
Thank you very much for watching. As always, I'll see you very soon.